What's up guys, it's Hedix here and today's video I'll be giving you my viewpoint on the newly created Chaos story from Treyarch's Zombie Team and why I personally believe it has potential to be a really good storyline. I'll try to be in depth as possible with my explanations of certain topics unless of course it is explaining a timeline of events. Those will be shortened but will still contain all the relevant information needed to understand what is happening. Why is there so much hate towards this story? Now before all of you jump into the comments saying, how can you like this story? No one beats Aether, this story is so boring and it's terrible. Aether's story is more interesting. Hear me out. Now I'll admit this story seems to have a few flaws at the moment, but so does the Aether storyline. The Aether story is not perfect. Now I don't want to sound like an Aether story hater because I'm not. I absolutely love the Aether storyline. I have been following the story since BO1 and was fully invested after Origins in BO2 and made it my mission to know the entire story back to front. However, that's a different topic for a different video. The Chaos story takes inspirations from different mythologies and legends and incorporates them into this new storyline. It seems as if everyone, their grandmother and their crazy neighbour cat lady who owns 13 cats are hating on this new story. No one seems to be giving it a chance. It seems to be getting treated like a younger sibling, always being compared to the older, more developed sibling. Why is there so much hate towards these new characters? Edward Richtofen. Tank Dempsey, Nikolai Bolinsky, Takio Masaki. These four characters mean everything to the zombies community. I feel like it's these characters that make it hard for people to like new characters. I mean, I don't blame anyone for liking these OG4. I love them, but I'm not opposed to entirely new crews and new stories. It's great to have something new every once in a while. The new Chaos crew, Scarlet Rhodes, Stanton Shaw, Diego Nicali, and Bruno Della Cruz are an interesting bunch. Scarlet Rhodes, adventurer and inventor, daughter of Alistair Rhodes who was also an adventurer and an explorer, and was kidnapped by a mysterious cult. Scarlet sets out to find her father with some of his most trusted associates. Stanton Shaw, a friend of Alistair Rhodes, is a master chemist and is thorough, intelligent and precise. After numerous self-experimentation attempts, he has lost awareness of a reality around him. Diego Nicali, a spy during the Mexican Revolution and is a living legend throughout North America. He is now helping Scarlett find her father and his friend Alistair Rhodes. Finally, we have Bruno Delacroix. Bruno gained a savage reputation in the Paris underworld. Although, after killing an innocent person, he now fights alongside Scarlett in a bid for redemption. These characters have an interesting backstory just like our OG4, but they are just different but different in a good way, a fresh way. Now, why are we comparing this to the Aether storyline? I hate the hate that the Chaos story is getting. I'm seeing people comparing the Chaos story to the Aether story. Well, I am okay with this. People are doing it unfairly to make the Chaos story look worse. People are saying the Aether story is more interesting than Chaos, but here's the thing. We have eight times the amount of Aether maps than Chaos. So if we were to do a fair comparison, we must compare the Chaos story so far, which includes Dead of the Night, Voyage of Despair, and Nine, with the Aether story from Nacht to Shinonuma. This compares the first three maps of each story that we were given. How does it differ from the Aether story? I'll briefly tell the story as of the first three maps from each story, so there's an actual comparison of each story. This can help others understand the Chaos story and how it is not as bad as everyone think it is compared to what we were given back in World at War when the Aether story just started. Just to note, these timelines are simplified so if I miss important details that you think I missed, I'm sorry. Firstly, let's give a recap of the Aether story from Nocturne on Toten to Shino Numa. A group of Marines was sent to Nocturne on Toten to investigate an outbreak. Meanwhile, the Nazis found some sort of alien ship containing element 115. Unknown to the Nazis what this element could do, they took it to Doris to experiment with technology and a secret group called 935 was formed to work on experimenting with this weird metal. On group 935 was a Nazi scientist and doctor Edward Richtofen. Richtofen was also a member of the secret organization the Illuminati. He was the one to find out the properties of element 115 and discovered that it could re reanimate dead cells, essentially creating zombies by bringing dead people back to life. While the Nazis are experimenting on element 115, an American spy, Peter McCain, 
and his team of scientists found a huge rock in a Japanese forest near an outpost named Shinonuma containing element 115 and took some samples back to the Pentagon in Area 51. Peter and his team travel to Verrocht where they encounter Edward Richtofen. Peter sends a distress signal and a marine team is sent in to rescue them. In that marine team was Tank Dempsey, a war hero and brave soldier. After arriving and finding no one there, the squad went crazy and all eventually died except Dempsey. Dempsey was crazy with him writing poems about death and zombies and writing Illuminati symbols on the wall. Richtofen decides to kidnap him and experiment on him with Element 115 along with Takio Emasaki and Nikolai Belinsky. Later, when Richtofen returns to Shinonuma with Dempsey, Takio and Nikolai, we see that Peter McCain returned here with his team. We see a dead body hanging from one of the rafters of the shack and we assume that it is Peter McCain and his exposure to Element 115 caused him to go crazy and hang himself. This is all the information we received up until Duris, which explained a few more things and introduced more new things too. And Chaos Story. The Chaos Story is obviously a brand new story that came with two maps on day one to start off the story. Those being Voyage of Despair and Nine respectively. Since launch, the story has added another map known as Dead of the Night, which is a prequel to Voyage of Despair. The Chaos story has zero connections to the Aether story, as stated by Jason Blundell in an interview. Chronologically, the order in which events happen are Dead of the Night, Voyage of Despair, and then Nine. Now this may seem dumb at first, as Dead of the Night is the third map to release, but it is the first map story-wise, as of me recording this at the end of 2018. But at this point, Alistair has not been kidnapped by a mysterious cult dubbed the Order with their leader, the High Priest. Although, if you ask Scarlet, she might say that he's a golden sadistic son of a bitch. The High Priest is looking for a substance known as Prima Materia. Prima Materia is a very powerful substance and is the cause for the zombie outbreaks in this storyline. As I said before, the Chaos story is taking inspiration from different mythologies and legends to incorporate into the story. With Dead of the Night, Treyarch added werewolves and vampires into the map, something we have never seen before. Then in Voyage of Despair and Nine, there is a heavy influence of different mythologies, such as Greek, Norse, and Irish mythologies. Okay, so now let's recap what has happened so far in the Chaos story. The crew for Dead of the Night is Alistair's butler, a retired general, a phony psychic, and a stage show cowboy. If you want a detailed explanation of Dead of the Night, I'll leave a link to my video explaining it in the description below. At the end of the Dead of the Night in the ending cutscene, we see Scarlet chase the Order as they get away with her father, whom they kidnapped at his mansion with the help of his butler, who is, his, who is suspected to be a part of the Order. Her father left her a letter in case he was eventually kidnapped and it said to trust only three people to help her find him. These three people are obviously Stanton Shaw, Diego Nicali, and Bruno Delacruz. By the time Voyage of Despair comes around, Scarlet has recruited Shaw, Diego, and Bruno to help secure the Sentinel artifact aboard the Titanic. Just before they can acquire the artifact, a member from the Order steals the part they were trying to secure and the part that Scarlet had already t obtained somehow. We assume she always had possession of it. The member from the Order activates the Sentinel Artifact and turns everyone on the ship to zombies as it is powered by Prima Materia. After completing the Voyage of Despair easter egg, our crew flee the ship and head to Delphi in Greece, as Shaw saw a premonition of something from Delphi. In this ending cutscene, it is shown to us and only us that Bruno is also somehow connected to the Order with a red stone glowing thing in his forehead. Once at Delphi, our crew inhale vapors which transports them to the Colosseum as gladiators. The Order is also here too. The Order need our crew to defeat the Nine so they can obtain the Prima Materia for themselves. Our crew successfully defeats the Nine, but the Order cannot obtain it as they are not worthy to have it in their possession. 
9 ends with our characters heads being cut off and we don't know if it's just their bodies that they inhabited when they inhaled the vapors or they were actually murdered by the order. If I'm going to be fair, I feel in this comparison the chaos story is superior at the stage we are at. I personally feel like people are hating chaos story just because it is something to complain about and it's different. Don't write it off entirely straight away. Let it develop before you decide because we might actually have a good story on our hands here. But how will you know if we don't give it a chance? As always, be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe for more content. Make sure you go subscribe to my second channel and Twitch channel and follow my Twitter if you want updates. Also join my Discord server to stay up to date with most of the announcements I make. If you feel like supporting me then you can also do that too. All links are in the description below. Peace out.